with all the other stuff going on with Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday, and people thinking a lot about gumbo and jambalaya and that sort of stuff, in the English Catholic tradition, pancakes were the big Tuesday before Lent celebration. Yeah, um, it was called Shrove Tuesday, and it, the tradition started in England. And what happened, uh, Matt, Christians went to confession and were quote-unquote shriven, and that means they were absolved from their sins. And then um, in the villages, a bell would be rung to call the people to confession. And then that bell came to be called the pancake bell. And some, in some places, it's still rung today um, that celebrates Shrove Tuesday in a very, very traditional manner. All right. So the questions here, I mean, we still use the word Shrove Tuesday in casual conversation. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people don't even know what the word Shrove means, but that's what it means. It means to be shriven, right? It means to be absolved of your sins because you went to confession to get ready for Lent, uh, this season of prayer and fasting and almsgiving. But the pancake part, I mean, if you're going to be fasting and cutting back a little bit and eating more simply, you got some stuff in your pantry you got to use up. Oh, yeah, because uh, Shrove Tuesday was basically the last opportunity that some folks had um, to use up eggs and fats before what you just said, embarking on the Lenten fast. And think of pancakes. They're a perfect way of using these ingredients. All right, so there's another tradition that uh, I don't know if you know about, but uh, on the Monday in certain parts of England, they would uh, take up the the collops, what they called them, collop Monday, Shrove Mm -hmm. Monday, uh, which is like the end pieces of sort of like the smoked uh, meat, and finish those up as well. And if you look at the kind of terminology they're using for the collops, it's essentially bacon. So you got bacon Monday and pancake Tuesday. I mean, Eng- <laughs> English Catholicism has got some good traditions in the food department. Oh, you know, that's so true. I didn't know that about uh, Monday and the bacon, but it certainly makes sense. And, and um, some of the reasons that we use some of these ingredients in pancakes, like eggs, those symbolize creation. Flour, of course, is a staff of life. Salt in the pancake uh, batter symbolizes wholesomeness. And then milk symbolizes purity. But I want to know about the whole wheat apple pancakes with nutmeg syrup. Um, basically, you're going to take a, a cup of whole wheat flour and a half a cup of wheat germ, and that's the center of the wheat kernel that actually sprouts. Really a lot of plant, plant protein and nutrition. And um, I usually, what I'll do is I'll take the whole wheat flour, the wheat germ, um, some baking powder and salt, and just whisk those in together. And then, All the dry uh, stuff, right? Yes, of course. And then I'll take a couple eggs, one and a half cups of buttermilk, and one apple that you peel and you chop pretty rough, and that's going to provide the sweetness. So you combine the wet ingredients with the dry, and then you just cook them on a hot griddle um, like regular pancakes. But the thing that we top it with is it's a, a nutmeg syrup, and it's so, so simple. It's just basically sugar, flour, and salt that you put in a saucepan, then you pour some boiling water over that, and you whisk it like crazy and and cook it about five minutes. Then you add some butter and some nutmeg or even some apple pie spice. Um, That's it, and it's a sort of a, not a real clear, sort of an opaque syrup, but it's just delicious because there's no sugar in the pancake batter. As I said, apples provide that sweetness. So you've really got the best of both worlds, don't you think? Yeah, and I do like that idea of letting the fruit cover the the sweetness, uh, and even like a little bit of the salt in that um, in that nutmeg syrup really does help uh, kick up sort of like the savory sweet part of this. I would think. Yeah, and you know, people um, sometimes, especially with um, baked goods or sweet goods, they'll think, "Oh, I don't need that salt," but you're exactly oh, you, right. That salt kicks it up. Yes, it does, and it amplifies the flavor, and also contributes to even um, the way they rise and such. So, yeah, and you know these pancakes you could certainly put any kind of fruit if you wanted blueberries uh if people want to connect with you and find your recipe for whole wheat apple pancakes with nutmeg syrup it's about eating.com uh you actually have a few different pancake recipes there but i've mm-hmm. posted specifically the apple pancakes recipe on our site in the show notes at sunrise morning show.com rita I'm looking very much forward to all the cool meatless recipe ideas you'll have for us during Lent starting next week, so have a good one. 